This morning, we have gathered on this Sawen weekend to acknowledge this liminal time of year. The crops are harvested, the weather has grown colder, the nights come quicker, and the morning sun breaks later in the day. All around us, nature is falling faster and faster into its yearly death. We see the change coming, and we can feel in our own bodies a shift, perhaps in our waking and sleeping rhythms, in our energy, or in where our focus lies. Perhaps you are beginning to nest for the coming winter, gathering up warmth, preparing for a season of rest. Perhaps you are clinging to summer, grieving the loss of the ever brief warmth, already thinking ahead to the spring. Perhaps like millions around the world, you are sensing the inherent mysticism of this time. This time of year when the cycles of life and death are making themselves known in the stilling of the earth nudges many of us to consider what worlds might lie beyond this earthly realm. This time of year, the desire to connect with those who will not be here for this next turning of the year is strong and persistent. In the Catholic Church, parishioners are encouraged to pray for their dead. They believe that life exists after we are released from our earthly bodies and that our spirits join in with the great communion of saints. Those who have died before us, it is believed, pray for us in our earthly life, and we too can pray for them after death. This great communion of souls is eager to assist us with their prayers, and we are encouraged to assist them with ours. In Mexico, Dea de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, falls on November 1st. It is believed that at that time, the veil between life and death and the afterlife is at its thinnest, and those who have died are able to visit their loved ones on earth for one night. Families travel to cemeteries to venerate their deceased loved ones, eating delicious food and playing music and games in communion with the souls of the departed. Beginning thousands of years ago, ancient Celtics recognized Samhain as a festival of fire, believing that this was the time of year when the barrier between worlds became penetrable. Rituals were performed to protect the living and appease spirits on the other side, while fires were lit inside and out to warm both the living and the dead. In modern Wiccan practice, this time of year is known as the Witch's New Year, a time to fortify your homes and communicate with other realms, as we did with the witch's broom a few moments ago. This is a quote from Catherine May from her book, Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times. Samhain was considered to be a moment when the veil between this world and the other world was at its thinnest. Old gods had to be placated with gifts and sacrifice, and the trickery of fairies was an even greater risk than usual. This was a liminal moment in the calendar, a time between two worlds, between two phases of the year, where worshipers were about to cross a boundary, but hadn't yet done so. Samhain was a way of marking that ambiguous moment when you didn't know who you were about to become or what the future would hold. It was a celebration of limbo. Today, 
I invite you forward to this altar. You are welcome to light a candle for someone who has passed on, who you would like to send a message to during this time. As you light the candle, say a few words in the silence of your heart, believing the person you are remembering just might hear them. We're going to light four candles now for each of the members of our flock who have died in these last few years. A candle for Donna Kroger, a candle for Jeff Cash, a candle for Lyle Gouldogger, and a candle for Damon Gross. You are also welcome to light a candle while holding the change of seasons and all of its meaning in your consciousness. Light a candle for a safe and cozy winter, for community during a season of darkness, for the knowledge and the promise that spring will come eventually. Or perhaps there is something you are hoping to lay down to eternal rest, something that has been plaguing you or holding you back from living your highest good. You are invited to light a candle of release and of inner peace. Or you can light a candle for any reason you desire. You are welcome to keep your intention to yourself, or if you'd like, you can speak into the microphone so that this community can hold part of your intention, too. this time of year when the veil between this world and whatever lays beyond is at its thinnest we hold in our hearts the memories of all those who shaped us into who we are today those who came before us and paved the way for the lives that we are blessed to lead those who came before us who taught us a better way to live or a way you shouldn't live. All those who left this world unjustly, too soon, and in pain. And all those who died good deaths that tell us how to leave this world in peace There is so much energy in this room right now. Grief and love intermingling. I believe that memory is a form of immortality. And so today, as we hold the memories of our loved ones in our hearts, Let's hold on to that kind of immortality. We're all holding in community the grief that is collective in this room. And I hope that we can comfort one another with our love and our care. We release the spirits of all those that we called forth today, and we wish them peace and eternal rest on the other side. Amen and blessed be.